Hey, Trig. Uh, we are moving on. We um, just finished chapter five, which is super analytical, and we're really getting into like the inner workings of the math and uh, where this stuff is coming from. But um, if you found chapter five to be confusing, good news. Usually chapter six is um, better for us and easier for students. So chapter six, we're going to get into some more tangible things, things we can see, and we're going to start by going back to triangle. Um, so far, everything we've done this entire year has been dealing with right triangles. But uh, as we may know, um, not everything in real life is made of right triangles. There are other triangles out there, and uh, that's where we're going to start getting into here with what's called the law of sines and the law of cosines. So let's get into this. I'm going to start by um, kind of just showing you where the law of sines comes from. Um, I guess it's a proof if you want to think of it that way, but um, again, it's helpful to know this isn't a magic trick. This isn't just some formula that Merlin made up in the ancient times. and um, th This is math people sat around and thought about and figured out. So um, I have this non-right triangle, but guess what? <laughs> Every triangle, whether it's right or not, um, we can make two right triangles out of it by dropping what's called an altitude. That's H right there. We call an altitude. So if I drop this altitude down, I just made a right triangle. Here's my right angle. Um, notice on these capital letters for all the angles, and then lowercase, their lowercase counterpart are the sides opposite of those angles. And that's going to hold up throughout this whole chapter. Um, so if I wrote from right here, it's called a lot of sine. So let's, let's take the sine of A. The sine of A would be opposite over hypotenuse, would be H over C. Okay. I could rearrange that and solve it for H. I could get H by itself. So um, that's what's happening right there. Sine of A is H over C. I could multiply the C over, and I got H is C sine A. Okay. I could do the exact same thing over here with C. The sine of C is H over A, and I could rearrange that and solve it for H. Okay, so I have two different expressions for H. That has to mean that those two expressions are the same. H equals this. The same exact H equals this. So these two things have to be the same. There they are. Now with one little simple division, I'm going to divide. This says C times the sine of A. I'll divide that over to the right. This says A times the sine of C. I'll divide that over to the left. Switch spots so we'll get A's with A's and C's with C's. And you get the law of sines. This is what the law of sines says. The law of sines says there's a ratio that holds in every triangle. And that ratio is the side over the sine of the angle across from it will be the same as another side over the sine of the angle across from it, over even the other side over the sine of the angle across from it. That, that number, whatever that is, is the same throughout the triangle, wherever we're looking. So um, that's it. That's the law of sines. Okay, let's put it to use real quick. Um, there's a lot of sines if you want to write it. Um, you can put it in your foldable if you want. We can keep using those things. Um, or you can just put this in your notes. Um, I don't know if I'm going to let you use the foldable on the next test, so maybe it's a good idea to put it in your notes, but um, this, it's all part of the study process. Having something handy that you can study and, and rip your formulas off of somewhere is nice, as you guys have found out. So that's it. Let's do an easy scenario. We have this triangle. It just says to solve it for A. It's not a right triangle. I can't think Sokotoa anymore. Um, here's our stipulation, by the way. There are There is a lot of cosines, obviously, if there's a lot of sines, hopefully. Um, so to use the law of sines, you have to know at least one angle and the side across from it. If you don't have that, the law of sines would never work. You would always have two things you don't know, two unknowns, and you could never solve it. So I have an angle, and I know the side across from it. I'm good. I know I can use the law of sines. So what the law of sines says is the side over the sine of the angle across from it is the same throughout the entire triangle. So 20 over the sine of 135 has to be exactly the same as A over the sine of 20. That ratio has to be the same throughout the whole triangle. So we set that up. It's a little equation. A over the sine of 20. A over the sine of 20 equals 20 over the sine of 135. Common mistake here. I see a lot of students sometimes just put 20 over 135 equals A over 20, and they forget the sine. It's called the law of sines for a reason. You have to take the sine of those angles uh, for this to be true. 
So I'll rearrange this. This says divided by the sine of 20. So I'll multiply the sine of 20 over to the other side. And I'll get this 20 times the sine of 20. That was just a coincidence. These two 20s. Uh, over the sine of 135. We rip it in our calculator, making sure we're in degree mode. And we're dancing because we did it right. A is about equal to 9.67. Before this question comes, where do I round it? Um, I'm not going to be super picky with it. Wherever they're rounding it in the problem, or the tenths, or the hundredths, um, unless I unless I say in the problem, you, I'm not going to be picky with it. All right. So we've handled that. We got one more problem to do. You're going to get a new direction here. The direction here says to solve the triangle, which is weird. Normally we solve an equation, like get a, get a variable by itself. We've handled that, but to solve a triangle means to find everything about it that we don't know. Okay, uh, there are three angles and three sides. We want to find everything. So uh, eventually, I'm going to need to know what angle B is. I need to know what angle C is. And I need to know what this side is. This side, by the way, would be lowercase b. Lowercase b across from capital B. Okay. Remember our stipulation. We have to have an angle and a side across from it to use the law of sine. And we do, so we can. Um, this ratio, 21 over the sine of 62 is the same as 19 over the sine of whatever angle this is. Okay, so in that first case, we were solving for a side. In this case, we're going to have to solve for an angle. So there's the ratio I just mentioned. 21 over the sine of 62 equals 19 over the sine of capital C. To solve this, um, you have some choices, and we'll talk about it in class, but I'm just going to multiply the sine of C over here. I'm going to multiply the sine of 62 over here. And then I'm going to have this 21 times 21. 21 times the sine of C. I'll divide the 21 over. So this is getting moved here. This is getting moved in down here. And this is getting moved up here. And we're left with 19 sine 62. It's just some algebra. Divided by 21. We'll get about 53 degrees. There's one step in there that I didn't mention. Can you see what it is? If you plug this in your calculator, you're not going to get 53, I promise, even if you're in degree mode. That's because when you rip this in your calculator, all you've solved for is the sine of C. Well, we know how to remove a sine from a variable. We would have to take the inverse sine and move that to the other side. That's how we would get the 53. Okay, so now we have this new updated problem. This is 53. From there, where are we going to go? <laughs> if you said, I have two angles of a triangle, so I know I can find the other one by subtracting from 180, then you're right. You do. You know two angles of a triangle. You know one of them is 62. You know one of them is about 53. Subtract those from 180, and you're left with C, 65 degrees. Okay. We got one more step. We can go back to the law of sines now. We know that that ratio is the same for any two side and angle. So 21 over the sine of 62 will equal lowercase b, over the sine of 65, what we just found. We have to use that piece of information we just found. So we'll solve it just like we solved the last one with a little bit of law of sines. And we have solved the triangle. We found the three things we didn't know, bing, bang, boom, and we're done. That's the law of sines for now. I'm just going to preface this by saying I hate the law of sines. Seems really easy, right? Well, that's because I started you off with the easy one. and We're going to practice the easy one. But um, it gets tougher, and we'll talk about that later. But for now, let's get good practice with the law of signs. There's part one of the stamp, and that's it. We're moving on. See you.